Jonathan Lau is a globally recognized expert on ozone therapy for animals and the author of the groundbreaking book, The Essential Guide to Ozone Therapy for Animals. Jonathan is not only an entrepreneur and public speaker, but also the visionary behind the International Veterinary Ozone Therapy Summit, the first ever gathering of thought leaders from across the globe. At the heart of Jonathan's work lies his unwavering commitment to evidence-based medicine that harmonizes with the body's innate biological mechanisms facilitating healing. His ultimate goal is to see ozone therapy integrated as a central modality in veterinary clinics worldwide. Through his groundbreaking company, O3 Vets, he has earned acclaim, including the Innovation Award from the Innovative Veterinary Care Journal. Residing near Lansing, Michigan, Jonathan shares his life with his wife, five children, and a beloved golden retriever. His passion for advancing the field of ozone therapy and his dedication to improving animal health drives his quest to empower veterinary professionals and pet owners alike. In this episode, Jonathan Lau opens the door to the world of ozone therapy, offering profound insights into its potential and benefits for animals. Join us as we explore his pioneering work, evidence-based approaches, and his vision for the future of veterinary medicine. Don't miss this opportunity to learn from a true trailblazer in the field. Tune in and discover how ozone therapy can revolutionize the way we care for our companion animals, unlocking new frontiers of healing and well-being. Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Jonathan, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm so excited to get your information out to everyone in the pet community, not just pet parents, but also veterinarians and anybody who works in, uh, you know, animal care, because this is something that a lot of people don't think about. And I don't want to spoil it. I want you to tell me all about what it is you're doing and why you're doing it. So if you wouldn't mind starting, kind of just telling me a little bit about yourself and how you got, how you started O3 Vets and what it is. Yeah, well, thank you, Jessica. So to to begin with, my name is Jonathan Lau and and I started O3 Vets back in 2013. So it's been a couple of years now. Um, and really when I started this, it's, it's funny. So I, I ran across a, I was working on the human side of things uh, a little bit and, uh, in the integrative health industry. Um, and, and I came across, um, some veterinarians. I had this thought, you know, nobody's really doing this, uh, for animals. Um, and they weren't, there was, nobody was promoting ozone therapy or teaching ozone therapy or anything like that uh, with animals. And so, um, I think I went to a holistic veterinary conference and I had like these banners from, from our human side and it like, it, it didn't go great because nobody was aware of it, but I met some people. I met, uh, Dr. I think, uh, Margot Roman there and, and she was huge into ozone therapy. And so, um, just like, man, you have to promote this. You have to start, you know, developing the equipment and developing the protocols and just doing all this. And, and, uh, so, so I did, it just started kind of snowballed and it was on the side for, for a while. Um, but the more that, uh, I began to, to see how, uh, crucial it was that veterinarians have this tool and hear all the stories about um, how it had helped their pe- the, their patients and uh, all of those types of things. Um, it really inspired me to continue on this journey to really getting ozone therapy to a place where 
it's uh, it's not marginalized and it's re recognized as a as a valid treatment. There's so much science behind it already um, that it wasn't really we're building on a really good foundation. Um, so I, I had that going for me, and uh, it, it's it's been a blessing to just be a part of developing this and all the veterinarians I've been able to meet. Um, you mentioned at the beginning of this year podcast, you know, you get to meet all these different types of people. The same is true for, for me. Um, it's been really, really uh, neat to, to have that opportunity. Um, and uh, so, so here we are in, in 2023, um, I guess, 10 years later, uh, basically. And uh, we're slowly gaining some ground <laughs> Um, on educating veterinarians and pet guardians on what ozone therapy is and how it can make a big difference in the health of pets. So what exactly is ozone therapy? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. And uh, I mean, that's the right. Everybody is like, okay, what is, what is that? Because when they think of ozone, actually, you know, I ask this question a lot, like what pops into your head when you hear the word ozone? Um, I don't know if you would I have like, an idea. I don't know that the, the, the big thing way up in Ozone the sky layer. around the earth. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we can't that's see. Every, everybody's <laughs> first thought is the ozone layer, you know, yeah. and it's, um, which is kind of a bad thing for ozone therapy okay. because it has this negative connotation. It's depleting. Also smog, um, they'll measure uh, smog based on the content, the, the concentration of ozone in large cities. So there's kind of this negative association um, with ozone and how that could be used as a medical treatment is beyond <laughs> anyone. <laughs> um, so really, uh, it's important that we separate those two, even though it is ozone and they're both ozone. Um, medically, we're able to use ozone and produce ozone cleanly and in a safe way, um, and then administer it in a way that is not at all harmful. That's very beneficial. Um, so it's key, though, that we have one pure ozone um, that's produced in a medical generator, and two that it's administered properly. Um, and when that happens, you know we can we can see all sorts of really neat benefits in pets. Um, so what is it though? Um, ozone is a reactive gas. So it's a reactive molecule. O oxygen is, is O2. Ozone is O3. So it's basically just three oxygen atoms um, that have combined together. And in fact, you'll see, you know, af after a lightning storm, you'll smell it because lightning produces ozone on, you know, here near the Earth's surface. Um, and so it's really uh, just a powerful form of oxygen. And as a powerful form of oxygen, um, it reacts and interacts with cells in a way that oxygen doesn't uh, to produce a healing effect. And we can get a little bit into that um, maybe at, here. But, but basically, it's, it's a treatment that helps in a couple, a couple ways primarily. Now, if you go look at the research and there's thousands of papers and articles and studies done on ozone therapy in human medicine and in animal uh, medicine, mm -hmm. if you go look at that, it'll be somewhat overwhelming and a little confusing because there's a lot of data and there's a lot of information and it doesn't all kind of say the exact same thing, but there are a few things we know. <laughs> One is that it helps in improve oxygen utilization. So on a cellular level, if our cells don't have the oxygen they need, just like us, they'll starve and die. Mm -hmm. And and so really helping uh, improve how the cells utilize oxygen to create ATP, which is cellular energy, is really can be very, very helpful for a sec pet. Um, another thing that it does, and these kind of correlate, is it it increases um, or it uh, rather it decreases inflammation. So when we have an overproduction of immune cells, so you get an infection, right? And our body says, hey, you need to create immune cells. Um, there's a lot of different types of immune cells, interleukins and proteins, heat shock proteins and different things that that kind of come to that area and help heal it, get rid of the infection and heal the, the wound or whatever it was. That's great. 
But when that doesn't turn off and that production keeps going of immune mm -hmm. cells, um, it's dysregulated, basically, it produces inflammation. And that can happen in a cut, in a wound. It can also just happen systemically in, in pets mm -hmm. and in people where we're continuing to produce. And that's it. It become a lot of times it'll become an autoimmune disease where we're producing cells that we shouldn't be. Um, and so ozone actually helps to reduce the overproduction. It helps to regulate is a better way to say it, the production of immune cells. Um, so it's, you can understand why with those two things, increasing oxygen utilization, and then helping regulate the immune cells that we could really affect change in a lot of different diseases. Yeah, it does. And a couple come to mind, but what are, what are you seeing the best utilization of ozone therapy for as far as diseases in animals? That's, that's a really good question. Um, and there's, there's so many different diseases that it's used for. It's a little bit hard to answer. Um, there's a number of guides that are out there on ozone therapy in human medicine. Um, and some of them actually have to do with, um, with, uh, arthritic conditions, uh, with inflammation from basically inflammatory processes, um, that are happening in ger geriatric patients. Um, and, and in those types of things, and also in degenerative, uh, diseases, degenerative discs and those, those conditions as well. So joints, spine, you know, um, those areas can be, uh, helped tremendously by ozone therapy, but that's just one small area, um, that it's used. And I would, I would say, um, any time though, that we think inflammation is a part of the potential issue, which is a lot. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, just going to cancer, I, we've had some, it's not a silver bullet, um, but it can be a, a great piece of the puzzle to, to helping fight even things like cancer. Um, we've had some phenomenal stories um, and testimonies by some of our veterinarians where they've just uh, seen a complete turnaround and some of our pet guardians, you know, they'll, they'll um, pipe up and tell us about what happened with their pet. And it's pretty amazing. Um, I do. But again, I don't want to be sensational um, in this either. And we do get those calls that say, hey, why isn't this change? You know, it doesn't seem to be making a difference here. And and so you do have both sides of the equation because every pet is different and how far the disease is along in that particular pet is different. Mm -hmm. um, and that's true of any medication. Um, but it's it's everything from, you know, again, cancer, we have a number of autoimmune conditions that are treated, skin, ears, eyes, any infection type of thing. Uh, that's a great thing to use um, with with those. So it really spans a number of things. So is this um, like a breathing treatment or is it like intravenous? Is it how is it administered? Yeah, so administration, um, there's... I, I say over 14 ways to administer ozone therapy. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, and and uh, so it makes it versatile. For example, if you go and you purchase a therapeutic laser, which a lot of the veterinarians we work with do, and that's fantastic. That's great. I like lasers. Um, you're going to administer it in one way. You're going to put it topically on the skin and it's going to be absorbed into the tissue that way. Um, the nice thing about ozone and sometimes the overwhelming thing is that we can administer it in so many different ways, um, mm -hmm. but it makes it more effective because we can get it where it needs to go um, much more quickly and we can have a systemic effect or a local effect um, very quickly at times based on the fact that we, we can administer it, let's say into the bladder for a bladder infection. So you can mm -hmm. catheterize the veterinarian can catheterize an animal and infuse ozonated fluid, ozonated sterile saline into the bladder. Um, and it's, it's a great way to, to treat that type of infection. The same thing is true of an ear infection. So we can get it right into there and we can use ozonated fluids. So for example, we have an ozone generator. That's how you make it. You have this little generator and it's connected to oxygen um, and the oxygen tank feeds the generator with, with 
with oxygen and, and the ozone generator basically produces this medical grade ozone. And we draw that up into a syringe or we pump it into a fluid that's in a special container, glass container, and it kind of percolates in there and it will absorb into and saturate into the fluid. And then we can take that fluid and go use it um, topically. We can at times lavage, rinse a wound or a surgical site um, and get some, some, it's a very powerful antimicrobial. In fact, it's the third most powerful. So it's much more potent than chlorine. Um, um but it doesn't have the negative byproducts. Mm -hmm. So, so there's some, there's the, but we can administer it that way. We can withdraw blood, infuse ozone into that blood and reintroduce it into the vein. That's a systemic mm -hmm. way we can do rectal insufflation super simple, easy way to do it at home. It's kind of like a suppository would be. Um, and, and so those are some of the ways that we can administer ozone. Interesting. Cause yeah, I was kind of wondering like, how would we target certain, you know, organs or certain areas of yeah. the body, <laughs> but it's so versatile. That's, that's kind of how, right. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So and I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to mention, I forgot, forgot to say, so, so we had talked about joint injections. That's another way to do it right into a joint. And then the easiest way to do it. Um, now ozone typically breaks down very quickly, uh, in air and in fluid, but when we ozonate an oil, when we infuse an oil with ozone, it can last for years and years. Um, so we can actually sell oils for use, um, and, and uh, they, those can be applied topically. So a, a pet guardian at home can take an ozone oil or an ozone cream or ozone shampoo or, you know, something like that, and they can apply it topically. That would be the, the easiest way to do it. it. It's typically, though, for a topical condition, not yeah. systemic use. That's really interesting and good to know because it reminded me of my dentist. He um, does oz ozone water rinses like before you start the procedure, I guess, instead of, cause I go to a holistic awesome. dentist. So <laughs> it's, it's interesting great. to like, just, and he like always sends you home with a little bottle of ozone water to like rinse when you get home or whatever. And I'm like, say like, if I don't use it, like how long is it good for? Well, not very long, apparently. <laughs> no. Yeah, exactly. And that's important to know um, because, and it's really neat that your dentist does that. Um, because most don't, but I think that uh, it's it's so helpful. But ozone in a fluid is going to last approximately 45 minutes is the half-life, mm -hmm. unless it's cold. If it's cold, if you keep it in a refrigerator and it's in the right container, it can last for maybe three days. Oh, wow. Okay. So pretty immediate. Like, just got to use it right then and there. That's interesting. So um, I'm. It, it, it was also... Uh, Pretty cool. You mentioned Dr. Margot uh, Roman. She, um, I had, and I'm not sure if you're familiar with him. Peter Cincarelli has been on the mm -hmm. podcast in the past, and Thank he you. has um, a pretty popular group on Facebook because he has um, had a dog with cancer. And so he just tries to help support people. Like he's, you know, not a medically trained or anything like that. But Dr. Margot Roman is his veterinarian. So um, he brought her up and talked about all of the wonderful and kind of new things that a lot of veterinarians aren't doing that she's doing and including like fecal transplants and things like that. So it's, it's very interesting that like our circle is smaller than we think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because there are so many incredible modalities out there. And I think, um, you know, as you were kind of saying, it, it may not be a silver bullet, right? Like having ozone therapy done for any sort of chronic condition isn't necessarily going to, you know, boom, overnight, cure the condition, right. but can be a really useful tool as part of the healthcare treatment plan for what whatever your pet is dealing with. So it seems like that's kind of how how you're approaching things with veterinarians. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. I think that's important for a, a pet guardian to understand somebody who's trying to treat their own pet at home. 
Um, uh, and even if you're just taking to, to the veterinarian to get treated, you know, I, th I think, um, we have to realize that sometimes it, it is a combination of things together. And if we can, if we can change the, the lifestyle and then, uh, supplement that with, um, some really powerful treatments like ozone therapy, oftentimes we can encourage the body to heal naturally. And that's mm -hmm. what our goal is, you know, is to, to help do that instead of treating symptoms that end up, you know, uh, really damaging oftentimes the, the patient in the long run, um, because it's suppressing immune function or it's suppressing, you know, the, the production of, of different um, proteins and different types of cells in the body. And, uh, that's typically not a good thing, you know, and I, I understand that it can be, um, short-term necessary and helpful, but typically it's going to have some long-term detrimental effects. And so mm -hmm. these, these things, um, that Peter recommends and that Dr. Margo recommends and that, um, we're trying to, to, to help educate others on are really crucial to get into the mainstream. Mm hmm so yeah i'm glad you 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 said that because it's it's so true you know we we have all these really incredible opportunities out there but one of the keys to being able to get this information to pet parents is to get it to veterinarians first and that yeah. is one of the i guess principles behind the you know oh three vets right is to get the tools and the information, the knowledge, how to use this out to veterinarians. So if we have um, any veterinarians listening or any uh, maybe veterinary support staff listening, can you just kind of go through what, what it is that you do for veterinarians to get them set up to be able to mm -hmm. utilize, to add this tool to their toolbox to be able to help more pets? Yeah. So, um, with, with veterinarians, um, who are interested in ozone therapy there, we have quite a few resources on our website. I try to be, because I realized that realized very quickly that without education and support, we weren't really going to be able to even sell generators. Um, that quickly became the emphasis is to, to help educate uh, people as to how this works and what they need. Um, so, so it's really a matter of just, okay, how does ozone therapy work? Um, you know, how does it benefit pets? Um, how do I get started with it? You know, and there's a couple things that I see if, if veterinarians are going to be really successful at doing this, they need a, they need the right stuff. They need the right equipment to be able to pull it off and to do it safely um, in the, in their clinic, in their practice. One of the ways we don't want to administer ozone is through breathing it. So you mm -hmm. don't want to breathe ozone. It's a reactive gas and how it interacts with the lung lining, um, it ends up being negative. Um, so because our lungs don't have the antioxidants that the, the blood does or the tissue or other tissues do, um, it actually can, can damage the lung lining. So we, mm -hmm. In a, in a clinical setting, you want to make sure that you have the right setup so that your, your uh, technicians and patients aren't going to be breathing ozone. Um, and so that's critical. Uh, and you know, there's, there's, uh, we have various options for large animals and small animals, you know, it just depends. And then we have home use equipment as well. That's, uh, not quite as, you know, involved in, or as, uh, maybe cutting edge or neat as the veterinary units, but they're, they suffice for people at home and they're a lot more affordable. Um, and, and so it's getting the right equipment and then it's getting some sort of training. Um, and a lot of times we'll do zoom training with people, um, mm -hmm. to, to help them get up and running with a veterinarian. We really like to have that, um, where they come to one of our regional trainings, because when you get hands-on, it's just a lot more effective. You mm -hmm. get much more comfortable with it. And, and, um, I think it really expedites them being effective in how they use it, um, in their clinic then. And then I think having a plan is really crucial too. So veterinary clinics that let's say they get the equipment and they get some sort of training, but 
They don't really have a plan for how they're going to use it in their clinic. Sometimes it sits there and I hate that. I, I want, if they're going to buy it and, you know, invest in that, I want to see it used and I want to see them really benefiting from it. And so the ones that have been most successful, um, we had a clinic just the other day that I talked to, uh, probably a few weeks back now. Um, and, uh, they brought it into their clinic in February of this year and they had more than paid for their equipment in March. Um, so maybe it was April, I think. And the reason is because they, they had a plan for how to use it and they implemented, they started using it on lots of different cases that came through their door. Um, and the reason that it, it went so well is because it was working. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they were seeing these cases um, that, that came through their door and they're like, wow, this is amazing. Did you see what happened on this, you know, on this case and that case? And, and so it was just uh, really incredible to see that um, work that way. But I, those are some of the important things. One, get the right equipment, get trained, and then have a plan for how to implement it in your clinic. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, with the education, with the training, if you know what types of cases to use it on, yeah. then, you know, that's, that obviously is going to be very beneficial versus just, I don't know, let's see if it works on X, Y, Z, right? Um, which it could, but, you know, having, having all of that knowledge and information mm -hmm. and packaging it all for the veterinarian. So as a pet parent listening, yeah. if you have a pet that you think, you know, they do have some sort of condition or, you know, heaven forbid, but we know it all, you know, it, it just happens later on down the road, they have some sort of infection um, or get some sort of wound. You could certainly bring it up to your veterinarian and so that, you know, you're planting the seed in their mind of like, oh, there's this other thing that people keep asking me about. Maybe I should look into it. Um, and of course you can call around to see if there are any veterinarians in your area that have have it already, but um, it just sounds like a really, really interesting and like a, you know, a truly do no harm way outside mm -hmm. of breathing it, <laughs> which we don't want to do, apparently. Um, a truly like do no harm way of, of helping our, our pets. And of course, for people too, it's, it's seems like a very viable option for us mm -hmm. human animals as well. Yeah. And, and uh, on that note, you know, if people are looking for a veterinarian who is doing this, there's also a map on our website at o3vets.com where they can go um, see if there's any veterinarian in their area um, who does ozone therapy. Unfortunately, there's not a ton of them. Um, there's about 300, I'd say, in the U.S. Um, who do this. So it's not a huge amount. And in some locations, in some states, that means just a couple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not even a couple. There's a few states. I don't think that have them, you know, less populated states. Um, but uh, yeah, so I mean, there are veterinarians out there though. Um, and if you can't find a veterinarian in your area, there is the option to do it yourself at home but with some administration methods. Some of them, yeah, we, we discourage <laughs> right, trying yeah. to do it. I think, yes, that makes sense. But topically, maybe they could, they could do it. That's yeah. yeah. So, um, where can people find you? So it's o 3 vetscom right? And the three is the number three. Yeah. Yep. So o 3 vetscom um, the number three, like you, like you mentioned, um, it, and we have, we have a, a fairly active Facebook group. So if people are on Facebook, um, they can go look for ozone therapy for animals and just search that and they'll find, they'll find our group, I'm sure. Um, and so those are a couple places, uh, for veterinarians. We have, you know, a WhatsApp group that is very helpful, um, on getting information really quickly. Um, so that's fairly active as well. Um, and so those would be the best places I did, you know, to just, uh, publish a book called, um, and that is available on Amazon. Uh, so that needed to be done. Yeah. <laughs> it's called the essential guide for ozone, uh, to ozone therapy for animals. And, um, I wrote it not because I'm a great writer, although I think it turned out pretty well. Um, but because it just wasn't out there. Um, yeah. so that's a great place to get more information too. 
Oh, I'm I'm such a book nerd. I love that. I have I have so many books. I'm actually like trying to plan out and build a library in my house. I'm such a book nerd. I love that. <laughs> but I will make sure to put the links in the show notes for everything for your website, the Facebook group, um, to get your book on Amazon. And honestly, guys, you know, I always try to get um, the really important people in my life, some something small around the holidays, whether you celebrate celebrate Christmas or something else. And um, this book may actually be a really, really great little Christmas gift for your veterinarian. Uh, just throwing that out there. <laughs> um, because, you know, the more like, I always say, um, we should never underestimate the power of planting a seed. And, um, mm. you know, our veterinarians are, I know today are, are really, really overwhelmed and, you know, it can be hard for them to uh, seek out new information and get education. But for this particular um, uh, knowledge base and, and adding in this new treatment plan to their veterinary clinic, um, hint, hint, it's another, it's another income source <laughs> for you guys as well. Uh, so ben benefits you and the pets. So I I'm, thank you so much uh, for joining us uh, today on this show and getting this information out to, to more people because, you know, we talk a lot about filling our, our toolbox and having lots of different things in our toolbox to pull from when we do have issues with our pets and just having one more thing uh, to help us. And again, you know, a, a really, really awesome, like do no harm method to help our pets is, is oh so important. So I appreciate what you've done over the past 10 years and what you're continuing to do and that you joined us on the show today. Um, if you have any any parting words for our listeners? Um, you're welcome yeah. to do so. Well, it was uh, absolutely my my pleasure to be on your show. So thank you for the opportunity, and and hopefully we'll you know be able to continue moving the needle on the use of ozone therapy and the reduction of antibiotics and other uh, medications that can can be good in their place but harmful at. Uh, in, much of the time. So, so that's, that's our goal and desire. And, and again, thanks for helping us get the word out there. Of course. Thank you again so much. And guys, don't forget to check the show notes for all of the links for Jonathan and O3 vets. Y'all have a wonderful rest of your day. Make sure to give your pets some extra love from me and from Jonathan this week. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Make sure that you're following the show so you never miss an episode. And please take a moment to rate the show on your podcast app. I'd also love it if you'd share this podcast with your friends and family so that they can benefit from the information to help their pets live long, happy lives too. Don't forget to take advantage of this special discount as a listener today and get access to over 100 online videos in my online dog training, the furry family coach. Just go to thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code podcast at checkout to get your first month for only $7. That's thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code podcast at checkout to get your first month for only $7. I can't wait to have you join and see you on the inside. Oh, oh, oh.